the main inspiration was behind it is that his wife, um, they were out at a restaurant and her, her like bag got stolen out of their car. All right. Stop. Collaborate. Listen. Welcome to G Club's Stop, Collaborate, and Listen, a show designed to get to know the board game community. This is where the board game movers and shakers stop what they're doing, collaborate on topics, and where we get to listen to designers, publishers, media creators, and you, the gamers. I'm your humble host, JT, and on the show I have with me Erin Dean from Candlebox Films, and she's going to be talking about her upcoming Kickstarter for the book called For the Love of Board Games. So, let's get to know our host. So, who are you? What is your role within Candlebox Films? And what dessert best describes you? So again, my name is Erin Dean. I'm the author of For the Love of Board Games, a book coming to Kickstarter next month uh, in mid-June. And um, so Candlebox Films was, is my freelance business, my video production business uh, that I run and do a lot of marketing videos for. Um, it's actually the same name of my YouTube channel, uh, which uh, my documentary is on, which many of you may have seen, which is um, The Board Game Boom, which is a board game documentary. Um, so that's just my freelance business. And um, I would say the dessert I can most relate to is ice cream because I help people get through the tough times and you know, ice cream does that too. So I would say ice cream is what I can relate to the most. I would have to say ice cream has helped me through some pretty tough times as well. So I like that. I like that ice cream. That's good. That's one of my favorite answers now. Um, and, and, and folks, if you haven't seen, uh, uh her documentary, I'm going to have that linked below in the description. Please go check that out. It's very well done. Uh, we've done the introduction. We're going to do the wind-up now. Uh, and this is where we get to learn a little bit more about For the Love of Board Games, the book. So, this is your opportunity here. So, what? how are we going to see this? Is this going to come in hardback, softback, digital? What's going to be in the book? Uh, tell us a little bit more about For the Love of Board Games. So, For the Love of Board Games is going to be on Kickstarter next month, like I said. It's going to be in softback, so paperback as well as digital copies of the book. So there's going to be different tiers, pledge levels that you can pledge to. Um, if you want both the digital copy and, and the paperback, you can do that, or just one or the other. And then also have a retailer uh, pledge level for anyone who wants to stock it in their stores. And um, not only is the book about interviews with designers, board game designers around the world, but it's also going to feature some really cool illustrations in the book. So um, there's going to be 10 illustrations to start with. If we do well on our Kickstarter campaign, we may unlock more illustrations. But they're basically going to be portraits of the designers as characters in their own games. So wow. it's yeah, it's going to be very cool. I hired a very talented artist who is also doing the cover for the book. And... Um, so that's what you can expect. But a little bit more about the book. So it's exploring how modern popular board games, how they were created, and it's interviewing the board game designers behind the games. So it's going to feature names like Jamie Stegmeier, Richard Garfield, Bruno Cathala, uh, Reiner Caninzia, um, just to name a few. I've interviewed over 53 designers, which I'm really proud of. And everyone has been a blast to talk to. And um, they're going to share their behind-the-scenes stories. And each chapter will feature a different board game designer. And not only will they discuss the inspiration behind their games, but they'll discuss how they started playing board games, how they got their start in the industry. They'll talk about games they never published, but they designed. <laughs> um, so it's going to be very, very interesting. And I think anyone who's a gamer a board gamer of all different ages is going to love this book now i got to see that cover that you talked about uh where you had uh four uh caricatures if i can ever say that name right uh sitting on a board game of i think it's scythe right correct yep jamie stegmeyer's scythe okay yep and so uh that's what the cover looks like right now and then uh you said you're going to be looking to unlock more illustrations and you said you had over 50 designers wow that's yeah, awesome yeah that's correct 
That is awesome. Yeah, wow. I'm I'm really excited about that number. It's 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 amazing, and there's so many more that I would love to talk to. But um, you know, if the book does well, I'm considering writing uh, a part two, featuring other designers. But I think that's a great number to get started for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've done the wind up. Now here's the chance to do the pitch. Okay. So who's this book for, and why should I back it? When I was doing my research about the book, I, I reached out to Board Game Geek community. I reached out to Reddit. And, you know, it's it's been about a year since the board game documentary, the board game boom that I created. And I wanted to do another board game related project. I just find it super fun and I didn't know what to do. But I thought, hey, maybe I could write a book. So I reached out and uh, the feedback I got was we want to know more about the designers behind our favorite games. Like, who are they? how'd they get into this? How did they come up with this design and all that stuff? So I think a lot of board gamers are going to find it very interesting and just a great kind of way to, uh, you know, give back to the designers that they love and the games that they love. And um, I think it's going to be a great addition to your game room. Um, you could be like, oh, we're playing Castles of the Mad King Ludwig today. I wonder how that was created. I'm going to just turn to page 53 and find that out. And just then, before your game night, you can be like, have all this fun, these fun facts to tell your friends and family about before you even start playing the game, which I think will be awesome. That, that is really cool. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing interviews like this, is to get to know those stories behind the scenes, because you just don't get that from reading a rule book or watching a review video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, you'll see the name at the top, and it'll be like sometimes like a little gear icon that you'll see, and you'll know, okay, that's the designer, and maybe you'll get another game, and you're like, oh, I recognize that name again. But you don't know too much about the person behind it. Sometimes in the rule book, they'll do a little brief bio, but even that is kind of rare. So I think this will be a cool way for you to learn more about what how your favorite games came to be basically yeah, yeah absolutely so i i'll be honest gang uh those of you watching here uh, at home um i'm really kind of geeking out over this book just because i love doing these interviews and uh just to be able to see uh all the different stories that are going to be behind some of my favorite games i'm pretty excited about it so she didn't pay me to say that at all so it's just honestly i'm just kind of geeking out on this stuff so now we're going to get into the swing and this is where i'm going to i'm going to pep you with some questions um that kind of dig in behind the book so um you talked a little bit about this about uh going out to the community and uh soliciting information and that's where people are kind of saying you know i'd really like for you to to jump in on this so is that uh, my, my first question was going to be is what inspired you to write the book so, like I said, it, I wanted to do another board game related project after my documentary and with its success, and I thought it would be fun to write a book, so I reached out and got everyone's feedback, and this idea tended was actually the most popular of everything that was pitched, and, you know, it was a way for me to connect with these almost celebrities in my mind. Um, you know, I'm a huge, I, I've been geeking out too, talking with these people and they've been so cool and so receptive and they've answered all my questions in the best light. And, um, you know, they really got raw with me and told me the truth. And, um, I'm excited to share this with other gamers like me. And, um, that's really what inspired it was just my love for the hobby and my love for board games and, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Now I can get I can guess at this, but what what did you enjoy most about interviewing them around the industry? I mean, is it the is it the stories? Is it the personalities? Is it just getting the background? What is it about this interview process that you've just said, "Ah, oh, this this is what I love about it." So, I always love I I'm a history nerd too, and I always find it interesting to figure out how something was created. Um whether that's a product or a game or it doesn't even have to be board game related. Um, but basically this allowed me to find out cause basically how I started 
uh, figuring out which designers I was going to talk to is I just went through my own collection. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I love the game Letters from Whitechapel, and I want to know more about it. So, you know what, I'm going to look up the designer. Sometimes I didn't even know the designer off the top of my head, so I'd have to look it up. I would be like, okay, I'm going to try to get in contact with this person. And uh, that's how I went about it. I was just, I would just pluck games that I wanted to learn more about, and then I would contact the designer. So it wasn't really the designer came first, it was the game that came first, and then the designer. <laughs> okay, yeah. that makes sense. During, during the course of all those interviews that you've done, um, so you've done... Uh, you said 53 for this one. You had a number of interviews yeah. that you did for your documentary on top of that. Um, during the course of all those interviews, is there like one or two stories or interviews that really kind of stand out to you? Yeah. So one that stands out to me is when I interviewed Evan Derrick uh, from Van Ryder Games. Yep. Uh, uh, he just came out with a series of books on Kickstarter, which is really cool. And... Um, he came out with a game on Kickstarter last year called Detective City of Angels. It's yep. a, a detective game that's set in Los Angeles. And I love just the theme of the game. And I actually backed this game myself. So I got in contact with him. And he was telling me kind of the inspiration behind it. And there were kind of three things. But the main inspiration was behind it is that his wife, um, they were out at a restaurant. And her, her like, bag got stolen out of their car and uh this she's an artist and her notebook with all her sketches was stolen and she was really upset uh, about it so it's it sucks like whenever that happens yeah. so evan actually kind of re kind of got in the mind of the robber and was like okay where would i go first i wouldn't go towards the restaurant i would go towards the alley and then maybe I would go this way. And he actually found the bag. Whoa. He found the bag in a dumpster. <laughs> and oh. he was like a detective himself. And he, this is what inspired the game. Like he wanted that feeling of, you know, a detective. And he wanted, you know, to get inside the mind of a criminal. And that's what the game was inspired from. And I just thought that was awesome. That like just blew my mind. Wow. Uh, yeah. So that was one that stuck out for sure. Wow, so what, what a way to taking an unfortunate event and turning it into an inspiration. So, mm -hmm. wow, that's a crazy story. Now, did they get the sketches all back? And, of course, probably the money was yeah, gone. Yeah, everything, I, I, the sketchbook was intact and everything. I'm not sure if everything was still there, but I do know just the mindset he had to get into to figure it out mm -hmm. is what he wanted gamers to experience in this game. So he tried to replicate that which I thought was very interesting. Uh, um, man. But yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to that game. Uh, I was pretty excited <laughs> about it when I saw it on Kickstarter. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's one of my most anticipated games this year for sure. Yep. All right. Now, you, you've, you've done a lot of video production. You have a background in it. In fact, um, you're, you're finalizing your degree. So the time we publish this video, um, you're going to be kicking up your heels with a diploma in your hand, right? And yeah, you're going to be running, correct. screaming into the world and saying, I'm free, I'm free. And uh, so as, you do, as you've done that, you've done a lot of work with video production. What has that transition been like, though, from doing a lot of video interviews uh, to kind of transcribing these interviews into a book? So... Video has always come naturally to me. I made my first video when I was in kindergarten. It was like this superhero video with puppets. And um, yeah, so I've always been doing videos from a young age. So writing and writing a book was completely different. Um, you know, usually I'm just kind of like on the fly, come up with something and I don't necessarily have to write down all my thoughts. And so for this, it really made me kind of slow down and digest things. And um, in school, I kind of focused more on the producing aspect of video. So I've conducted a lot of interviews, um, video interviews. So this was nothing different in that regard where I was just, you know, kind of sitting down with a person, whether it was via email or Skype or whatever the form was, I was conducting an interview. And I just love connecting with people in that way. And um, you know, getting to know them personally and ask them hard questions and kind of lead into unraveling a story. 
And um, so that was no different. Um, but the writing aspect, like the tedious part of the writing has been the most challenging mm -hmm. uh, for sure. So let's talk about you for a second on the, in, in the hobby. What was kind of that, mm -hmm. we talked about, you know, back in kindergarten, you started playing with video, mm -hmm. right? But how about right. the board game side? That seems to be a, a passion of yours as well. And I'm sure it's been really neat to kind of see a couple of your passions kind of come together between video and board games. But what was that red pill moment, so to speak, to use a matrix reference, matrix reference to jump you into the hobby of board games? Yeah, I, I remember the specific moment. Um, you know, like a lot of other people, I played mass market games as a kid. I played the game of life. I played Monopoly and all those other mass market games. But I was, I think, a junior in high school. So this is uh, I bet almost six years ago. Um, my aunt gave me Ticket to Ride for Christmas hmm. as a present. And I was like, oh, board games, yeah, I haven't played them in a while, but this looks interesting. That box art was really cool. And, um, but yeah, we played it that same weekend, I think, and um, I fell in love with it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome, and board games can actually be fun, and no one's fighting, and it's no, one's, <laughs> no tables are being flipped over. And um, yeah, it just kind of snowballed from there. Uh, I found Settlers of Catan, you know, I found Pandemic, uh, which was the first cooperative board game I had ever played, mm -hmm. and I I just fell in love with the hobby, and I was just like, it, it was just almost addictive to, like, find out these new games and these new themes or mechanisms, and yeah, that's kind of how it started, though. Yeah, the, I mean, those are some, those are some great games that I'm sure as as anybody that would say, what are the top 10 gateway games, right? Catan, Ticket to Ride, Pandemic, those are all ones that everyone always says, hey, look, if you want to get somebody started, you know, those are definitely ones to get them going. Yeah, and I've eased in now to more Euro games, more heavier Euro games, like Grand Austria Hotel, and, uh, you know, just almost building upon, like, okay, I liked set collection from Ticket to Ride, so I'm going to go check out another game that uses this mechanism, but maybe it's a three difficulty on board game geek. Um, hmm. So it would just kind of like snowball from there. And I would, you know, if you like this game, I would suggest this game. And now I think my collection is over 130 board games. Um, nice. So yeah, yeah, it's been awesome. And I, every chance I get, I try to play a board game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you just try to build on that, right? And so as you get, as you learn more and more about the hobby and learn more and more about what mechanisms you like, then you're going, okay, I know I like this, so what else is out there that has this in it, right? Right, yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. So obviously you've had an opportunity to get to know a lot of different people in the industry. And uh, to be quite frank, uh, folks, I'm jealous. So um, you've had an opportunity to be able to interview so many different people. Um, and I'm sure some of them have become friends and, and you've been able to get to know some of these folks. So who do you know in the industry that you think others should get to know better? I think one that stands out, not only from my experience with interviewing him, but from what others have said uh, with his customer service and just how he's like all for the gamers and trying to make the best experience possible for them is Keith Mateka, uh, hmm. who designed Role Player. Uh, very popular game right now, very in demand. Uh, from what I've heard from others, and this was evident when I interviewed him, he's all about, you know, his fans and um, the people who play his games. If you have any component trouble or anything, he's on top of it. Hmm. You know, he runs a very small business, and um, I don't think he even, from what I recall, he doesn't even design board games full time. Uh, he's a part time designer, okay. but um, he really puts his all in his games and uh it shows okay yeah i i have to say i've been really impressed with role player um all the mechanisms and everything around it but you're talking mm -hmm. that he even takes it further as far as customer service and taking care of people um and those people that are servant-minded and want to do everything to help other people are just very interesting right. people to talk to and a lot of fun to uh interact with absolutely all right so Here's a here's a little bit of a turn of a question here. What have you learned from failure? 
I would say what I've learned from failure is that I'll, I'll kind of rephrase the question. I, I think wh whether it's designing a board game or writing a book, um, you can't be afraid of failure because any, like, for, take, take a, designing a board game, for example. You may have this brilliant idea for a game. You may have this brilliant idea for a, a book. But if you don't actually start working on it or getting it down on paper or putting it on cardboard, it's worth nothing. And um, this guy over here may have an amazing idea for a game, but this guy over here may have an average idea for a game, but he's actually creating it. This one's always going to be better uh, because you're actually creating something. And um, that's where playtesting comes in and um, having people read you know, your rule book or read your manuscript and um, then you just keep going from that point forward and improving, but you got to get something on paper. You got to get something down to get started. You know, a, a friend of mine used to work with who does podcasting now on its own in a completely different realm, of course, um, this guy, Rob, he, uh, he always used to say, uh, there's a big difference between perfect inaction and imperfect action. And the imperfect action is going to get it done. The perfect inaction is going to do nothing. And it sounds right. like that's what you're trying to uh, get across to everybody here. Yeah, absolutely. That nails it on the head for sure. Yeah. So what's next for you? Uh, after this book, do you have another film plan or, you know, you, you mentioned if this does well, maybe another book, do you have something in the makings right now or is it just uh, what's in front of you at this point? Right now, my total focus is on for the love of board games, um, the book. So, I'm really trying to put all my creative, you know, energy into this book and try to get the best book out there possible for gamers. And, um, you know, I think how I work is I, I try to get one project done and then towards the project, I'll start thinking about another one. Um, and right now my total focus is on this book, but I think as time goes on, and I may start reaching out again, uh, to some people and seeing what they want to see. Cause, uh, I'm all about creating content, um, no matter whether it's video or a book or a podcast, mm -hmm. I just want to create content. And, um, I, I want to create content that people are interested in and that they want and that the industry is lacking. So, uh, I don't know exactly what's next, but I'm excited for whatever it is. And I, I know it's going to be board game related for sure. Okay. Makes sense. Um, there's certainly a lot uh, that goes into running a Kickstarter and finishing a book, and you certainly don't want to get ahead of yourself before you get the next thing finished, right? Um, right. So, because if you don't finish it, there's no sense of moving on to the next thing. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've done the wind up, the pitch, the swing, and now we're going to the catch. The catch is a lightning round of questions that I'll pepper you with uh, for quick answers, and so here's your opportunity to be able to have those lightning quick reflexes uh, jumping out. And um, so those of you at home that are following along, as I give these questions, feel free to post your answers in the comments below. So here we go. First question. What is your meeple color of choice? Red. Red, all right. If someone asked your friends who your favorite board game designer is, what would they say? Um, Jamie Stegmeyer. What board game universe would you want to live in? Um, sorry, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Uh, Escape the Curse of the Temple. Oh, wow. That would be fantastic. Um, except for the whole, like, poison and dying thing. But, <laughs> all right. Name one person you haven't interviewed, but you'd want to. Mm, Alan Moon. What TV channel doesn't exist but really should? Uh, if there is one, I don't know, but I think it should, like a board game related channel would be awesome on cable. Yes. Amen. Thank you. All right. Um, what makes you laugh every time? Mm, puns. Puns. That's, that can be punishing. What game do you wish you could erase from your memory so you could experience it again for the first time? Captain Sonar. Ooh, that's a good one. What game title best describes your life? Hmm, 
this is a tough one. Uh, when I dream. Okay. Interesting. Some people say that there are two types of gamers in the world. What are those two types? I would say there's casual gamers and there's heavy gamers. Okay. What is your grail game? My grail game? Uh, if that means my favorite game of all time, I would say probably Ticket to Ride. Okay. Among your friends, what are you famous for? Um, always having a board game to play. Okay. <laughs> what designer would you want to have lunch with? I would say Dominique uh, from North Star Games. Okay. And what did he design? Uh, Wits and Wagers, Evolution, and Say Anything. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Just like you, I start with the game and sometimes end up with the design. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the final question. And this, well, this one is worth 2,000 points. So hopefully you get this one right. All right. If there was a fire in your home library, what's that one game you're grabbing on the way out the door? St. Petersburg. Ooh, okay. So we've done the wind-up. We've done the pitch. We've done the swing. We've done the catch. And now we're going to take the call here. So where can, fi where can people find out more about you and where can people find out more about For the Love of Board Games? So if people just want to learn more about my background and who I am, um, I would suggest they go to my personal website, candleboxfilms.com. Uh, I have an about page there that kind of goes into my background uh, in video production. As w uh, And then if people want to learn more about the book, the best way to learn more is to go to our Facebook page group and join it and I always add people immediately so um, don't be worried if you have to wait a little bit but I'm very good about getting people accepted into the group but you can just go to that group by searching for the love of board games dash book and it'll pop up okay so I'll have that of course down in the description below where you can join it up and I'd definitely go check out that Facebook group. Um, she does a lot of teasing in that Facebook group where she kind of says, did you know this little tidbit about so-and-so? And so you get all these little tidbits and you're like, I want to know more. And she's like, exactly. So come get the book. Um, so <laughs> come check those out. Go check out the links below and uh, definitely check out that Facebook group. And for those of you at home that are following along, what would be the one designer you would want to have lunch with? Let us know. I just want to say a big thank you to Aaron for joining me here on Stop, Collaborate, and Listen. Um, I really appreciate you joining me today. Thank you so much, Jason, for having me on the show. It's been awesome, and I can't wait to talk to your fans more about the book. Absolutely, absolutely. And my apologies to Christian from Take Your Chits. As we ran out of time once again, we'll have to reschedule him later. So we had a great time here uh, on Stop, Collaborate, and Listen. I, and listen, I hope you did too. And if you had fun, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well if you want to see more board game related content just like this. We'll have all the links for Candlebox Films, for the Kickstarter for the love of board games in the description below. And if you have any feedback, please put them in the comments below. My name is JT. And I'm Aaron Dean. And you've been watching G Club. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>